Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut out these subjects, put them on this background to make this image. Are you ready? It's Photoshop time, and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to extract these subjects, put them on this background to make this image. So the quickest way to activate the select subject command is just to activate the quick selection tool, which is the fourth tool down. And what it's gonna do is give you a toolbar up here, which activates the select subject button. Just click it. Photoshop does a great job trying to figure this out, especially this image, because it's very complicated in that it's very flat. The, the tones are very flat, which means the edge contrast is not gonna be as good as it should be. I'll hit Command or Control L just to bring up the levels dialog box. Do you see how we're missing the black tones? If the base of the mountain is not to each of the edges, this is the black side, this is the white side. You can remember that by looking down at the output levels. So I'm missing pure black, pure white, and a lot of dark tones and a lot of highlight tones. So that's what's making this a bit harder. I'll click cancel. After I've used the select subject, my cursor is automatically in add to selection mode. You can see the plus sign. So essentially I'm just gonna paint over what it missed. Adobe Sensei AI will figure it out if you help it. I'll hold down the alt or option key to turn that to a minus. So deselect and just keep painting back and forth and it will figure out what it is that you're wanting. Here it's gonna have a hard time because of the light background with the light mask. But again, if you keep painting back and forth, Adobe Sensei will, will figure it out. Now, if you have some spots where it's just having too hard of a time, just toggle over to the polygonal lasso tool. That's the third tool down. Once you hit the disclosure triangle, you can choose it. It's the second option. And this is really nice, especially for those people that don't like the pin tool, which is great for very precise selections. So this other technique that I wanted to show you before I refine the edge, if you hold down your command and space bar, it will allow you to temporarily zoom into the image. Then the space bar only will temporarily activate the hand tool, allowing me to move my image around. Now, if I want to deselect this little part of the background with the polygonal lasso tool, which is right here, which is a great alternative to the pen tool. If you hold down the alt or option key and just click, it's going to create straight lines. And then you just need to click back to the starting point so it will close the loop. Do you see this little part right here and then up here? I want to show you something. Here I'm going to be subtracting from the selection as well. So I'll hold the auto option key and start the click. And then I can release the auto option key and it will automatically stay negative. If I need to select outside of my viewable area, if you hold down your space bar, it will temporarily postpone the selection process, let you pull your image down. I'll let go of my space bar and now I can resume my clicking for either adding to or removing from a selection. And I don't have to come all the way back to the starting point. I can double click and it'll automatically close the loop. So I'm gonna just really quickly fine tune this selection and then we'll get into integrating the scenes. Six and a half hours later. Two more quick tips. If in the process of trying to add to or subtract from your selection, you misclick and it turns off all the hard work you've just done, don't panic. Just hit Command or Control Z. It's gonna undo the very last thing you did and it'll bring your selection back. The last thing I'll say is after you've refined your selection to the point where you're ready to make it pretty perfect. What the f Click the select and mask. It's going to show you what you've done. Typically, the refine edge brush is great for any stray hairs, anything that looks a little. So I can just paint it on the perimeter where there's these fuzzies up here and they're kind of blurry and they match the color of the background, so it's gonna have a bit of a hard time, but overall it'd do okay. And I'll soften up where the hair is on his arm. And that's really it. You can always toggle on the smart radius and dial it up to one to two to three pixels. It'd kind of re-look at the image. Depending on what you're pasting into, I typically always smooth mine one to three, and I'll feather it 0.2 to 0.8 pixels. If you need to decontaminate the color because there's strong color in the background, this is a good thing to check. Here I don't need it because everything's so homogenous. And I'm going to output to new layer with layer mask. And the reason I do that is because it protects my original, it jumps it to a new layer, adds the layer mask, alt or option key just to take a look at that mask. That's a pretty strong mask. And it's ready to go. What I mean by that is I have my other image right over here. So to get it over there, instead of selecting all, copying all, and then going over and pasting all, which clogs up your RAM, I'm going to just grab this layer by clicking on it, dragging it up and over to the tab I want it to go in. And here's the trick. You've got to drag it back down into the image. If you hold down the shift key, it'll directly center it. Sometimes that's helpful. 
my subject image is way higher in resolution, which is why it came in so big. So I'll hit Command or Control T to free transform it. I just activated the free transform, but I can't see the bounding box. If that happens, that same technique of Command zero to fit in screen will work with the free transform. So now I can see my corners so I can dr drag in. If I hold down the Alt or Option key, it will drag into the center, which is sort of what I want. And I'm going to say somewhere right here. Now, typically you're not supposed to photograph a subject and, and cut off at the wrist or the knees or the ankles. Nothing we can do about that here, but I can use it to my advantage now and just pull this down a little bit, hit enter. And actually now seeing this, I want to make that background just a little larger because I want to get rid of this distracting light. So I'll click on that background lock, unlocking it, turning it into a regular layer so that I can now hit Command or Control T and I can actually stretch this up until I don't see that light anymore and then just create it to taste. Maybe, it, maybe I would hold the shift key and stretch it up, skewing the aspect ratio a little bit. That's okay with me. Pull this down, hit enter. I don't like this line back here, so I'd probably just grab the spot retouching tool, left bracket key real quick, and just paint over that and let Photoshop remove it for me, just so I don't have that distracting element. It has trouble sometimes with the top edges of things. I'm not worried about that for right now. Now I'd like to add a bit of a blur to the background. Obviously they don't match. The blacks, the rich DMAX, which measures the blacks of an image, do not match the richness of DMAX in the background. So I'll fix that in a moment. First, I'm gonna fix the blur issue. I'll hit Command or Control J just to duplicate the layer. I will hit G for the gradient or come over here and select it. And then I'll toggle up to the Basics tab and make sure that I'm on black to transparent. That way it will allow me to add a layer mask over here and it's gonna allow me to create multiple drags in here to reveal the blur. So let's go apply the blur. I'm going to select that background image, not the layer mask. Go up to filter, blur. Lens blur is always better than Gaussian blur if you're trying to fake that shallow depth of field. And just drag it to the, to the uh, amount of focus that you want. Say so I just want it to be a little bit blurry. I'll click OK. Now our eyes have trouble with this because we know how photography works. We know things get blurrier as they recede in the background. So obviously everything is blurred equally because it's a flat 2D image. This is why we added the layer mask and we and, and hit the G key for gradient from a black to a transparent. So now I can say, well, everything close to them should be in focus and it should fade to out of focus. Same for this side. I can start the dragging outside of the image area, maybe on the floor and see the mask, I'll option click on it so you can see. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. So I'll click back on the image. All right, so, so we're really getting there. I don't think I'm quite there. Maybe I wanna stretch that a little more. I like that a, a bit better. So now we need to fix matching these images. And the quickest way to do that is just add a levels adjustment layer. Click the black point eyedropper and notice that I'm resetting the DMAX for everything underneath because I haven't clipped it to anything. So I'm going to click on the lightest part of this image because this is the one that really needs to get a lot darker for the pure blacks. And I'll click right in here. In the mouth should be a pure black. Once I do that, you see how it auto calibrated, making it look like it was actually photographed in this scene. And then there's a nice shallow depth of field uh, going back. If you don't like this warm cast, Quickest way to get rid of that is just to select the white balance eyedropper, which is this gray point eyedropper, and click on a highlight area. And what it's gonna do is it's going to look at, this, at the color bias that's in that highlight area and remove it. So chances are it's gonna make this orangey image a bit bluer. Okay, so that neutralized it a lot. Now for me, I enjoy this color cast. So I'll hit Command or Control Z because I like this warm look. It looks very natural to me. Now looking at it as its own image, remember your eyes gonna go to the most sharply focused part of the image or the brightest part. And for me, the brightest part is are these books over here. So I would actually want to add another levels adjustment layer. And I would wanna pull down the output slider just to dim those whites over there. Now it's gonna dim everything, right? So what I have to do is make it only apply to this area. The quickest way is to invert my mask by hitting Command or Control I hitting B for the brush. I'm painting on a black mask, so I need white. So I'll hit X to revert my colors, right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And remember, black conceals. So this black mask is hiding what we just did. And then I'll paint with white just to reveal that a little bit. And then if tonally it feels like that's too powerful, hit the X key and come back with 40% and take 40% of that brightness off. Make sure I didn't get any of our arm. Let's push this to its own layer. Command, Option, Shift, letter E. I'm gonna Command J it. And I'm gonna try just a creative technique. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna blur it, blur everything. 
a lot. Then I'm going to go down to soft light and then I'll lower the opacity to taste. And what that does, it kind of just creates this dreamy atmosphere, increases the overall contrast and color saturation, which for this kind of bizarre image, I think totally works. So I can't wait to see what you make. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.